Well, it's safe to say most base models can't do that. Oh my gosh. What's up everybody? My name is Elliot, but you can call me the Motory Notary. And look, it's short season here in Kansas. And you know, I feel like Megan Trainer because today's video is all about that base. And that's why I have this 2021 Porsche Macan. That's right, no letters or numbers following it. It is just a Macan, which means it is a base model. And today, I wanna to talk to you about how sometimes the base model isn't actually that bad. Now, it's worth mentioning that I do have some experience driving Porsche Macans, except the last time I was on film driving one of these cars, well, this is what happened. Uh -huh. Yes, that was me sitting in that white Porsche Macan taking the brunt force of a 50 mile an hour Corvette impact. But that was like five years ago and this is now. We have an undamaged Porsche Macan in front of us, but more importantly, what it represents. When you tell somebody that you've bought a Porsche, it implies a certain amount of speed, prestige, and that you've bought a very expensive car. But to car people, they know that there's quite a bit of difference between this $52,000 base model and the $100,000 GTS top of the line model. So what do you get if you opt for the bottom of the barrel base Macan? I didn't know until now, so let's take a look and walk around this thing and see what you get. Now, the difference between this model and the 2016 model that got met with the horrible Corvette fate was that 2016 is a first-gen Macan. Now, this isn't necessarily a second-gen Macan. It is what's called a refresh design. Now, what exactly did they refresh? Well, not a whole lot. Now, there are some differences between the turbo and the base model, like the intake gills and stuff like that are a little different, but fundamentally, they only changed a few things, one of which being these headlights. Instead of four dot running lights, you now get four dash for running lights. But other than that, everything's very similar. The doors are the same, the mirrors are the same, the roof line, all of that stuff is unchanged until you get to the back of the car. That is how you can really tell a refreshed Macan from the first generation Macan because you have this huge continuous brake light bar, which is all the rage now and something that you'll find on 911s and other Porsche models. But it makes a huge difference seeing this light bar versus the two separate brake lights that they used to have. But other than that, if you were in a Whole Foods parking lot, you are really not gonna be able to tell the difference between this base model and like a top of the line GTS model. And I think that that's not such a bad thing if you're looking to get into Porsche ownership. But speaking of Porsche stuff, let's talk about the most important stuff. What's underneath this massive clamshell hood? Pop the hood here. All right, uh, this is interesting. You can't pop the hood unless the door is open. The door physically blocks the hood pop. <laughs> I've never seen that. Must be some sort of anti-theft measure that they put in. I can't imagine why, but look at the size of this hood. It is the very definition of a clamshell. It is not only the entire top of the car, it's also part of the fenders and there's big headlight cutouts and stuff. If you get in an accident with any part of this involving this hood, good luck to you and your insurance company. This must be an expensive piece. But that's not important. What is important is what's underneath here. And remember, this is the base model. But the base model doesn't get the monstrous twin turbo V6 like the GTS does with more than 400 horsepower. No, no, the regular Macan gets a two liter turbocharged four cylinder making 248 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. And in fact, it is the same motor that is in the Volkswagen Golf R. But unlike in the Golf R, this one's in a Porsche, which means it is also paired to a seven speed PDK dual clutch gearbox, which is, in my opinion, the best dual clutch or any gearbox on the market today. Not only that, but it is also all time all wheel drive, which is really cool for anything, let alone a base model. Other than that, plastic cover. And over here, you can see this teeny tiny turbo that is really doing a lot of work to make that kind of torque figure. Let's move on to the interior and see what kind of luxury features you get when you spend Porsche money. Now, climbing in to the base model Macan, the first thing that I notice is that it feels exactly like climbing into a Macan S or Macan Turbo. Those are the upper trim level cars that should feel a lot more expensive, but this base Macan feels 
really identical. Everything you touch is very premium and feels expensive, as it should. You're greeted with real leather almost everywhere you touch, and a very impressive center stack here with a lot of buttons, but not too many that are overwhelming. Although, Doug DeMiro would definitely have a problem with the amount of blank panels that you get in this particular one. But, like with any Porsche, the amount of blank panels you get are up to you, depending on how many option boxes you tick. Other things looking around, you get your centralized tack, which is very race car-ish, a really cool adjustable digital display on the right, which tells you all sorts of information, and over here, you have the newer infotainment system, which is a lot bigger than it was in the first gen model, and a lot more responsive than it was as well. It also does this cool proximity thing when you reach up, it gives you more menus, but it detects that you're about to touch it, which is pretty cool. But yeah, looking around, you get a lot of other stuff, including a totally panoramic sunroof, which I guess at this price point you probably should get, but it does make quite the big difference in a car like this. Now, for all you moms in the group, let's take a look and see what the back seat's like. Ugh. Climbing back here, well, it's surprisingly roomy. Um, I have this adjusted to where I would sit, so I guess if somebody was a little bit taller, it might be a little bit more cramped. I'm telling you, it looks a lot more cramped than it actually is, and again, identical to the back seat of an S or a Turbo, and those cars cost twice as much. The other things you get back here, you kind of get your own climate control, heated seats, and two USB-C ports. Now that's not US before Christ, that's USB type C charging ports, which is still pretty nice for your backseat passengers. Let's go see what you get for cargo space though. Now, when you go to buy your Macan, the first thing you might want to do is open up the tailgate and see what kind of groceries and stuff you can put back here. But to that, I ask, how do you do it? Because there's no handle uh, anywhere, and doing it from the fob is pretty impractical. But the people at Porsche thought about this, and instead of putting an unsightly handle here, they hid the liftgate button here, below the base of the wiper, which is very weird and very non-intuitive. But click it, and it beeps and opens up, and you're greeted with a pretty standard amount of cargo space. Nothing impressive about it, but it's obviously more than enough to handle everything, and you get this optional little privacy cover. Of course, you can lay the seats down flat to get even more room, but there are a couple of other cool things back here that I wanted to show you, namely this spare tire, which is really cool and orange, and you'll also notice the tire itself is collapsed, so you actually inflate the spare before you put it on, which is pretty cool and also space saving. Also worth noting, I think that those wheels would look great if they were like 20 inches and all the way around on this white car, that'd be really cool, it'd look like a rally car. But the other thing I noticed about this particular Macan is it has this mystery compartment up here that uh, seems to hold nothing. Um, now a lot of German cars put their tools and stuff up there, and this one looks like it's got a slot for something, but uh, well, it's just not there. I guess if you were Harry Potter, this would be a great place to hold your wand, but for now, it is blank much like some of the option boxes on this car, which coincidentally we have the window sticker for. So let's kind of see what exactly this Macan has and then go take it out on the road. Let's see what you get when you order a base model Macan. The first thing I noticed is that this one was not in the $50,000 range, but it also doesn't have that many options. So let's see what made it go up almost $17,000. As you can see, base price $52,100. You get a few options here, the sport tailpipes, which normally these have like a rectangular type of tip. This has like the Macan S tip, 950 bucks, no big deal. The next one is the wheels, 20 inch Macan turbo wheels in satin platinum for $4,000. Now these wheels are okay, but I don't think they're worth $4,000 over the base wheel. They're not even that much different than the base wheel. That is an insane option to me. The next one is interesting, and this is kind of that whole base model thing that you'll find. This is what's called the Premium Package Plus, and for $7,400, it gets you what I would call the bare minimum of equipment on this car. So that's your heated seats, your dynamic lighting system. It's basically the options you would expect to be there, but that Porsche puts on there for another $7,000. And one thing you'll find is that you cannot go to a dealership and find one of these sitting on a lot that doesn't have that option because why would a dealer even stock one of these cars if they don't even have, you know, the sound system and the heated and cooled seats? These are kind of just basic things. So that's kind of how they sneak that base price thing up on you. But what you're left with is a car that started out at $52,000, but ends up at $67,000. Now, let's see how that $67,000 base model drives out on the street. Okay, driving the 2021 Porsche Macan base model. 
And very similar to what I said when you first climb in the interior, the driving experience, you wouldn't know that you're not driving one of the turbo or GTS models. It feels very, very premium. Like if you were blindfolded and didn't know you were in the base model, there's virtually no way to tell from behind the wheel other than when you press your right foot down, but I'll get to that in a minute. The steering feels weighty and significant. The materials all feel premium. I mean, even the shift paddles feel like these weighted pieces of metal. Everything just feels great. The ride quality is okay. I probably would have spent the $4,000 on the magnetic ride control that Porsche offers offers rather than on these okay wheels, but you know, that's just one of those things. Now, like I said, the difference here in the driving experience comes from the power department, but that's not to say it's bad. So turning onto this street here, if you just roll onto it, and it's actually really good, and bam, fires off a second to third PDK shift, and here comes another one. Oh yeah, I mean, really, genuinely it feels like a fast car like way way faster than its power and torque figures would suggest i mean in this particular car doesn't even have 250 horsepower and that felt genuinely fast and it's geared in such a way that it feels super fast like in that zero to 50 range around town a lot of confidence pulling out in front of traffic in this particular model i figured a base model would feel kind of like a dog but in this, it doesn't. I mean, I've driven the ones with double the horsepower and this doesn't feel like half. It feels like a really good car, which is saying a lot. And provided there aren't any black Corvettes around looking to hit you, it's just a good car to drive. The road holding is good. It's got lane keep assist and all that other stuff. And speaking of which, it does have a couple of other cool things. Now, as you could see from my interior videos earlier, it has a clock up here. And normally back in the day, to even get a clock up here, you would have to option something called Sport Chrono. Now this doesn't have that, but when you do option it, it gives you launch control. However, Porsche still kind of fitted these with a form of launch control. It just doesn't say that it's launch control and you activate it in the same way. So you press hard on the brake, press on the accelerator, it holds RPMs and Oh my gosh. And there's the PDK shift. I mean, and there's highway speed. That is <laughs> very, very fast. The all wheel drive obviously makes it so it doesn't have any traction issues, but the acceleration and the torque just feels so much more than 273 pound feet. That, I mean, that was incredible. And this is a base model $50,000 car that I just launched. That's, that's nuts. And speaking of other things performance-wise, this transmission is the best in the game, and one of the reasons why is the way that it can skip gears. So like right now, going 50 miles an hour in fifth gear. If you want to pass somebody and floor it, in a traditional automatic, it has to hunt down through all these gears and do this thing. In the PDK, you just floor it, went straight to second gear, fired off a quick shift, you're past whoever you need to be. That is impressive, and it's the exact same kind of experience that you get in the turbo model. And heck, even a GT3 with this transmission does that same thing. It is so impressive the way that this thing shifts. In fact, it shifts so fast that the tack needle can't even keep up with it. Once it goes to shift, it flicks back so fast the other direction, it almost looks unnatural. And the way that this thing makes this really cool fuel cutoff fart sound in between shifts. I mean, that's a very exotic car thing too. And all of this is from a base model. Now, one feature that my mom's doesn't have that this does have is something that's interesting. I was just gonna make a comment about how the cruise control system here is very non-intuitive, but you'd get used to it. But then I noticed it has this little button on the bottom of it that just says LIM. And when you click it, it shows you on the little digital display here that it goes from being cruise control to a speed limiter. Now, what you can do now is you can set the speed limit to whatever you want. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and set it to, I don't know, 55. And what's interesting is right now we're going 30. I can floor it and now we've reached 55 and I'm flooring the accelerator still. And it's just gonna hold 55, which is a, a very interesting feature. I don't really know 
what this is for, but it is fun. I guess I would just set it to like five over the speed limit and floor it everywhere I go because then you just get that Porsche acceleration right up until the speed limit and then you can just hold it. So <laughs> that is the craziest feature, but I do love it. And it is also worth mentioning, it's not unsafe. If you activate kick down, which you press the pedal a little bit more and flick the switch on the bottom, it will accelerate past that. But I, for one, have been having a lot of fun with this speed limiter feature. Like I'm gonna do it again, cause that was so fun. And we're accelerating pretty fast, PDK shift, and I I'm still flooring it. And we're just gonna hold 55. Uh, and like I said, kick down. See, it chimes to let you know that you're you're going over the limit, but it's a limit that I set, so that's fine. This car has changed my opinion on how good a base model can be. But it's a good thing because this particular Porsche model also represents what would be a lot of people's entry into Porsche as a brand. And if it's this good, they're gonna wanna explore different models and possibly higher trims in the future. So from a sales perspective, making this base model this good was a brilliant move on Porsche's part. So that's the 2021 Porsche Macan base model. And as you can see, it is quite a lot of car for the money. Now it is a lot of money, but it makes you wonder why you would spend double for the GTS version of this car when this car is still pretty great. It also makes you ask why you would spend $4,000 on wheels that look pretty identical to the free base model wheels. There's a lot of questions that come with this car, but one thing is for certain, it is excellent to drive and to just be in. Unlike other manufacturers where like say the BMW 5 series is okay and the BMW M5 is this out of this world, totally different driving car, the Porsche Macan base drives just as well as the top trim GTS model. So why would you spend double? Well, the only question you have to ask yourself there is how quickly you want to accelerate because other than that, this is quite the car. And as long as you don't care exactly about being the fastest, this is hands down the best crossover SUV in the segment without a doubt. And it totally changed my expectations of what a base model can be. So yes, while top of the line models rule, this base model has also proven to me that base models can be pretty darn cool as well. Well, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Be sure to follow me on Instagram. I try to post as much behind the scenes content as I can there. Follow me on Facebook, join my Facebook group. It's a great place to share memes and I'm almost always in there interacting in the comments. And other than that, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe on this video. It greatly helps my YouTube performance and I will see you guys on the next video.